Hello everybody and welcome to the NPTEL online certification course on uh, CMOS digital VLSI design and we will be doing the sequential logic design module number 7. Uh, in our previous lecture, uh, we had seen that, uh, uh, that uh, there was a problem of clock overlap, right? And we saw that if there is a clock overlap, uh, there is a chance that uh, whatever data is inserted onto the, uh, in, in, on the on the master part of the sequential logic will actually be also present at the output part, so, which means that there is a race condition available with you, uh, which primarily means that any data which you are inserting is at the same instant of time available at the output side. So, you are not able to process that data internally. Uh, this was possible because uh, your clock and clock bar were both having the same values which resulted in NMOS and PMOS of two opposite transmission gate switching on simultaneously and therefore, the data was going from one end to another. And since we are using CMOS inverters as logic, uh, logic uh, outputs, so the swing was actually maximized to high value. Uh, to remove that, we had seen that C2 MOS logic was used. Now, the C2 MOS logic was uh, such that, that even if there was a clock overlap, there was no way in which uh, there is a short circuit path between the output and the ground and therefore, the logic was actually stored uh, at the output even if there is a clock overlap available, right. So, this we have already learned through our uh, extensive, uh, uh, extensive lectures uh, in the previous turn. Now, what we will do is basically look into the fact of um, dual edge triggered. So, till now we were actually looking at edge triggering happening at only one side, which means that if you have a clock and the clock is this like this, which is giving me a fixed value, then if it is a positive edge triggered clock, then during the rising edge of the clock, which is this or this or this, you are able to sample the data. So, the data was getting sampled exactly at the rising edge of the clock, right? and the sampling was there provided you had you do not violate the setup time and hold time violations. So, the next sampling will take place here right and the next sampling will take place here, the third sampling will take place suppose let us suppose here and so on and so forth right. So, what, what does it tell me therefore, is that apart from setup type and hold time constraints, uh, the frequency of the output is actually being governed by only these clock edges, which is basically the cleft, uh, the rising clock edges. Now, if I have a, a shift register based design allows me to, to sample the data in both the rising as well as at the falling edges, right. So, this is the rising edge, right and this is basically your falling edge, right this is your falling edge. So, if I am able to sample my data in both the edges, uh, the frequency will double itself, the output frequency will double itself for sampling the system. So, that was the reason why people have used uh, dual edge trigger design which you see in front of you. As I discussed with you in the previous turn, uh, let us suppose your clock is uh, clock is basically uh, high, then M2 will be on and clock bar is low which primarily means M3 will be on and therefore, this set will be transparent and a mod x will be therefore, equals to d bar which will be stored here. But if my if you see if your clock is this is so, so what is happening in the first case is let me give you an idea that if clock is equals to 0 right let me let me again come back if clock equals to 1 then clock bar will be equals to if clock equals to 1 if clock bar therefore, equals to 0 this will imply that that this this first register which you see in front of you right will be transparent because this will be on. So, M 3 and M 2 will be on. So, this will be on right and this will be also on. As a result, uh, whatever the value of D will be available at X with a uh, inverted form because M 4 and M, M 1 and M 4 form an inverted pair right. So, M 1 and M 4, M 1 and M 4 form an inverter. This will result in what? X becoming equals to D bar right with x becoming equals to d bar, but you see I have just not taken clock to be equals to 0 and clock cl clock to be equals to 1 and clock bar equals to 0. So, when clock equals to 1, then m 7 and m 8 are off state, m 7 and m 6 right are in off state, which, which means that the effective uh, circuitry if you look at the at the uh, at the output side, you will, you will have this something like this and something like this. So, this will be m 8 and this will be actually your M 5, this will be M 5 and this will be connected like this. So, you will have D connected like this in this manner, but since your 
middle data middle uh, path is not there you will have uh, the output uh, your x will always have a fix. So, so basically your q uh, will hold the previous data whatever the data is right and uh, to best the best to form is that if you can put in the q 1 2 inverters connected back to back this will also ensure to me that there is always uh, you will always be storing the data over, over, over the period of time assuming that there are no leakage paths available to you right. So, if there are no leakage path uh, in the system then I could safely assume that any data stored at node q uh, will store the data as long you have a feedback path available to you. So, generally what people do to do that that at output q uh, this is let us suppose output q they put two cross coupled inverters in this manner right right with appropriate W by L ratios. This ensures to me that whatever the value of Q is, is actually available to me that value same value is stored there. So, this will becomes Q bar, this comes out in Q. So, the same value is stored, it is recharged time and again and since this is static CMOS uh, implementation, it will either go to VDD or to ground depending upon whether the input value is above the switching threshold or below switching threshold respectively. Now, so, what does it what does it what does it tell me therefore, that now what has the what has happened with the condition that clock equals to 1 and clock bar equals to 0 our a, our uh, this uh, this tra transistor m 5 to m 8 transistors they are all uh, they are all uh, not coming into picture and therefore, q actually stores the original value of data. Similarly, uh, what will happen is when your clock and clock bar so, what I am trying to tell you is that I can just replace this right into this fact I can, I can just remove this part and replace it by this. So, what will happen is in that case your d will be transparent uh, your d will be transparent why because when clock goes to so what I was using was when clock was 1 let me say clock is equals to 0. So, when clock equals to 0 if I use this uh, profile then m 10 becomes on clock bar is equal to 1 m 9 becomes on clock bar equals clock equals to 0 means m 7 is on now right and clock bar is this means this also on and therefore, d is transparent to q and you can go there. Also you can see here in that case provided the same thing is replicated here uh, even if I so in that case what will happen is this, this will go switch off this will go to the off state because in that case m 13 and m 12 will be off right and therefore, there will be no path available to you. So, what I am trying to tell you therefore, is that if your design is such that that you do have a clock here and a, and a clock inverted register here, then I will be able to store the data at point Q in a much more easier fashion and I can also make it transparent. So, in the next clock cycle whatever the value of x is stored here will be transported to Q right and that is the reason uh, we get this type of uh, what is known as it. Uh, so, this thing. So, so, you see both in the positive edge triggered when the clock when the clock is going from 0 to 1 and as well as from 1 to 0 when the negative edge triggered in both the cases the data d is actually being uh, going to clock q. In the first phase when d, when when the clock is equals to 0 when the clock is equal to 0 and suppose it is going from 0 it was initially 0 then clock 0 implies that uh, this will be on right and uh, clock 0 will m m m 10 and m uh, m m 9 will be on and therefore, this d will have this path available to it right. So, if this is clock says so the clock equals to 0 then clock bar equals to 1 will, what it will do is that it will find this path into in, in itself when clock goes 1 and 1 to 0 then when clock equals to 1 then m 2 is on m 3 is uh, on and therefore, data d will be transparent and going to capital Q fine. So, what we have learned from this is that that I will be doing therefore, uh, this is basically two master slave uh, parallel. So, this is one master slave this is one master slave uh, latches right and they are using tri state. So, these are all tri state drivers these are known as tri state drivers. So, I am using tri state driver drivers and they are basically all master slave edge triggered flip flop. Uh, we define a new term here which is known as a clock load, clock load is defined as we define a new term known as clock load, clock load is defined as the total number total number of uh, 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 MOS devices uh, which are directly driven by which are directly driven right driven by clock 
So, if clock is driving say for example, 8 transistor the clock load is basically 8 right. Higher the clock load more is the power dissipation because uh, the clock has to do much more amount of work in order to drive those transistors right. And that is the reason the clock load here is typically 8 if you see because 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So, M2, M3, M6, M7, M12, M13, M9 and M10 are all driven by clock right. Uh, I am ag again assuming that these all clocks and clock bars are perfectly non overlapping in nature. So, that is a very important uh, condition here even if they are overlapping uh, you can see yourself that th this will not make your life difficult in terms of uh, dual edge triggering the flip flops right. So, this you can keep in mind as far as tri state. So, this one is the known as a tri state driver which you see right and um, this works very fine with almost all the uh, system design as far as this is concerned. Uh, we come to the next ca case and that is basically known as two single phase clock register. See the problem of the previous all discussion was that you do have a clock uh, which is is basically uh, uh, the clock by itself is uh, you have to generate clock and clock bar right. And we already know that if you want to generate clock and clock bar uh, then you have to be very much uh, certain that there are as minimum number of 0, 0 and 1, 1 overlaps uh, because that we have already discussed that that will that is a problem for us and to do to remove that we went to C2 MOS logic and then we went for a uh, dual edge trigger design uh, in this case. So, many people have done that and uh, quite a lot researchers have come out with an idea of what is known as a true single phase uh, clock register. So, this is also known as TSP uh, CR. So, that is true. So, this is the word is true single phase clocked register right. So, what I am trying to say is that the first one, the first one if you look very carefully, it is possible to design a register that only uses a single phase clock. So, that is that is the only term which you should be careful about, you should be able to understand. For a positive latch, this is not a register, so for a positive latch, suppose the clock is high, then this if clock is, so if the clock is say, the clock is equals to 1, it means that this inverter is acting as an inverter right. So, this will be acting as an inverter. I will get the inverted from of inverted here since clock equals to 1 this will be also acting as an inverter and therefore, out will be equals to in and therefore, in input will be coming from this point to this point. Similarly, if you have PMOS transistors here and if you have clock equals to 0 you can automatically give therefore, this to be equals to 0 meaning this will be on state. Similarly, this is equal to this will be on and therefore, you can directly feed from this point to this point the whole value of the voltages which you see here right. And therefore, whatever input you give will be appearing as in bar here, whatever input you give will appear as in bar here and this in bar will be again inverted through a static in, uh, inverter and the output will be equals to in right. So, this we have already seen and this. Uh, uh, so, so, so what we do therefore, is that this, this is basically a latch, uh, this is not a register right. So, this is not an edge trigger design, it is basically a latch where I am, I am, I am assuming that at high clock frequencies or at high values of clock uh, or e input clock. Uh, my data will be able to sample the my system will be able to sample my input data and store it in the output for in at any point of time. Uh, why is it important? Because then if you want to store a data and the problem is uh, discussed with you earlier also that there are chances that the data might get corrupted by virtue of its leaking. So, there will be a leakage current because of sub threshold leakage and so on and so forth. So, you need to periodically refresh the data at the output node. And therefore, this clock helps you to do that and gives you two cascaded inverters and they give you a very proper uh, output available to you. As I discussed with you therefore, that the clock load in such a case is just 2 and I am still with these two uh, clock load of 2 I am able to therefore, have these type of profile. Now, if I want to therefore, uh, construct want to construct a register, I just need to cascade uh, one positive and one negative latch. So, that is what is written here. That a so, so, when so, so, you see if you cascade this, uh, this, uh, this one. So, what I am trying to tell you is that if you have a, if you have a positive latch right and you cascade that with a negative latch, negative latch. Then when you have input here D, again the same concept exactly the previous cases that in the positive latch when, when the rising edge of the clock or when it is clock equals to 1. 
d will be appearing here, but at that point this will not work because this is negative latch right and therefore, this will stop here. Now, when the, in the in when it has fallen the clock has fallen down this will become transparent this will become off and therefore, the d will be available to you at the output side right. So, I can actually cascade one positive and one negative latch and using TSPC and then uh, make it what is known as a, a register right a basically a clock register. And that problem is that uh, whenever you look at these two figures wherein you have one clock one positive latch and one negative latch. Uh, driving an NMOS logic is relatively easier as compared to driving a PMOS logic. And the reason being PMOS logics are basically holes of the carriers and therefore, the mobility is typically much much smaller right. And hence uh, driving a PMOS logic is rather more difficult as compared to driving an NMOS logic. Uh, which what does it therefore, tell me that uh, if you have an NMOS logic which is there in the positive latch I can easily drive it from on to off state and vice versa and therefore, your switching times will be very very small right and you have to be very cautious about this. This is the first very important point which you should know. The second important point is that the clock rise time and fall time should be approximately uh, should be very very low right your rise time and fall time should be very very low. I will give an example let us suppose your clock rise time is not very low it is typically very high like the rise, the rise time is. Um, is something like this I do not have a I can, I can I can show it to you say the rise time is one is rise time like this another is rise time like this. So, I have a typically large rise time here right. Now, if the rise time is large then please understand what will happen in a latch case if you allow therefore, the clock to rise uh, for a larger duration of time then you are allowing the data to be sampled even when the rising edge of the clock is available to you right and therefore, you will be violating the setup time uh, here if you have a very very if you do not have a very very sharp uh, uh, input edge right. So, your, your input edge should be as sharp as possible. Typical industry regulation is that uh, your your clock uh, your clock should be approximately 5 times more speed as compared to the input data that is the industry standard which people try to which try to follow in this case. Uh, so, we have discussed that point and we have also seen that we can cascade a positive and negative latch to obtain a, a TSPCR a logic available to me. So, what people did was and that is quite interesting is that they found out that uh, I can actually see we remember when we are doing static CMOS logic uh, we told you that uh, I can I can insert NAND gate, NOR gate, XOR gate and I can embed logic within the uh, within the system itself. How did I do that? I made NMOS logic up uh, PMOS logic sorry you made NMOS logic depending upon the Boolean expression available to you and once you have done that uh, just the complementary of that will be your PMOS logic in the pull up network. So, all your parallel networks in the in the pull down will become series networks in the pull up and all series networks in pull down become parallel network in pull up right and with this we were able to formulate a boolean expression the exactly the same thing you can do it in the latch as well. So, you can embed uh, logic functionality in the latch itself and how do you do that is something like this I can show it to you. For example, you you do have a you do have a um, uh, this is suppose your latch right. So, this is one of your latch which is basically a negative latch and then you put input here and then depending upon the value of p u n suppose clock is equals to high, uh, is high which means that this will be shorted and therefore, this will act as an inverter and in value will have an in minus or whatever uh, depending upon the value of the uh, upon the upon the logic gate uh, some value will be uh, stored here right. By that time when the storing is taking place let us suppose clock goes low. When the clock goes low then if you look at this this diagram clock goes low means this becomes off and therefore, whatever the new value initial value of q is being stored here right. So, you do not have any so you do not have a transparency available here and and you are able to transfer you are not you are not going to transfer data from point d to point q. So, q is holding its original data in the next phase of clock when clock becomes again equals to 1. Uh, what happens it takes it takes finite amount of time for this input to sample here by the time this d will be able to make and therefore, q will be equals to d bar available to me crosses cross it through a static inverter and you automatically get a d here. But then you have to ensure that uh, during that phase of time 
you do not let this network the first network go to uh, go to uh, like making it on. If you then make it on chances are that a new value of output can appear at point D which might destroy the old value right and therefore that therefore that is the reason we should be very careful as far as designing this logics are concerned. If you look at uh, the right hand side which is basically an AND latch then if you look very carefully uh, in 1 in 2 are in uh, series and in 1 in 2 are in parallel here. So, let us suppose I have got in 1 equals to 1 in 2 equals to 2 1 then you will have at clock equals to 1 at clock equals to 1 if my in in equals to 1 and in 1 equals to 1 in 2 equals to 1 then this network is activated and this will fall to 0 if this is 0 if clock is equals to high then q will be always equals to 1 available to you fine. So, I will have 1 1 I will have 1 available here fine. Similarly, if clock is low and if either of the inputs input 1 and input 2 is either of them is 0 then this will be going high and therefore, this will clock is high and therefore, this will be equals to 0 and therefore, I will get a pure inverter available to me. I think I, I made it clear what is happening in this case that you do have a you do have a uh, logic functionality embedded here. I can have a NAND gate, NOR gate, I can have an exclusive OR gate all embedded in the system right. So, this is one advantage of using a uh, uh, DSPC. Uh, if you look very carefully uh, another methodology which people have been adopting is that if you look at this is the positive latch the first one is a positive latch right uh, and it and the second one is a pure inverter where I am feeding for example, if clock equals to high right if the clock is high then this these two will be shorted and therefore, I will have out equals to in bar right I will have out equals to in bar if in if this is not shorted and it is open then the original value of out will be stored here available here right. Uh, the, uh, the idea here is that your clock loads are clock loads are reduced because if you look at the negative uh, latch uh, in the sorry the second phase of the latch does not have a clock here. So, your clock loads have reduced and, and but the disadvantage is that you will not experience a full swing because you have removed the inverter from the last stage. So, that that peak to peak swing would not be available to you in this case right that is the basic issue negative latch you can understand here again when clock equals to 0 only you will have this to be on and then you will have this a will be equals to in bar and if this are two, two are shorted in a, a bar will go to this and it will out, out you will get as a right. So, this we have already seen through our uh, previous discussion and explanation also right and we have actually explained what the basic idea is in this case. Uh, there uh, we will finish this whole topic by using uh, two register styles here and the first is a pulse register style. Uh, so, I have been using till now a master slave configuration which means that you have the master which was sampling the data storing it and the slave was responsible for transferring the data to the output world when the master was switched off. So, at no point at time you had a direct contact between uh, between input and output. Now, there is also an another method by which we say that uh, which is known as a pulse register method by which we can do the same thing as we are doing in clock register, but only thing is the configuration is slightly changed. I will I like you to see this fundamental uh, work here which is basically if you look at this particular point. So, let us suppose that um, my clock was equals to let us say 0 right. So, 0 means this is an AND gate right. So, this will be obviously 0 this will be 1 this will be 0. So, clock so if it is C L K equals to 0 C L K G will also be equals to 0 this will switch off M N. So, M N will be off state right M N will be off when M N M N M N is off uh, and your M P is on x will hold equals to VDD right is it ok because this is equals to 0 and therefore, clock equals to 0 uh, your MP will be on any VDD will appear at x and therefore, x will be equals to VDD right it will be true. But when clock goes from 0 to 1 right there is a finite period of time when both the clocks are might overlap and as a result what would happen is quite interesting that when clock goes from 0 to 1 right it goes to 1 let us suppose it goes to 1 here it is this is 0 0 to 1 means this will cut off right. Uh, this will mean that this x value uh, which is uh, which is at this particular point will uh, go to 0 when the clock pulse has passed, but there will be a finite duration of time when both the clock and clock g will be high which is you see here 
right and therefore both clock and clock g uh, will be high this is also known as a glitch clock right so this this is basically output is basically known as a glitch clock why because that if therefore what is initially equals to 1 no, so 0 to 1 it goes right but suppose this mp is switched on and x was initially it will take some time to go to 0 and therefore this is actually equals to 1 so 1 1 will give you 1 this will give you 0 give you 1 mn will be on mn on means it will try to uh, your remove the potential at node x right but when it tries to remove the potential at node x already your job has been done and therefore even if the value of voltage at node x falls down you are not really worried about it you have already extracted the voltage at the output side and your clock g has already gone high and it will remain like there because you have inverted connected node available to you fine this is basically the positive edge triggered because and I will tell you the reason why is it what why is it a positive edge triggered design and the reason can be seen from this figure which you see in front of you. So, if you look very carefully uh, the glitch clock is actually shifted from where from the clock and the reason being uh, the clock has to travel through one AND gate one AND gate right and two inverters I 1 and I 2. So, the total delay for the uh, gate to actually evaluate node x signal to m n will be actually the sum of the delays of AND gate uh, and two inverters here right. And based on this m n will be either switched on after a certain period of time which is determined by this total sum of the delays of these three elements right. And then uh, so, so, so what I am trying to tell you is the sampling is done at a very very small window and this window opening is governed by the delays of these three uh, basic elements. So, the combination of glitch free or glitch generation circuitry which is this much and the latch which is this much will result in a positive edge triggered latch right. So, think about it how is it possible, but that is what it is done that you generally can, can, can replace a positive edge triggered uh, edge triggered design by this latch and its corresponding uh, glitch generation circuitry right. Uh, the, again the cost you pay for it is basically higher power dissipation uh, because you are, you, are, you are intentionally putting glitch into consideration and therefore the power dissipation levels are relatively very high right ok. Another version of pulse register is shown, shown here. So, when let us suppose uh, uh, let us suppose when clock equals to 0 maybe I, I do have a slide ok. When clock equals to 0 uh, then m 3 and m 6 are off right. Uh, this p 1 is on and therefore, x is evaluated to v d d. x is evaluated to v d means this 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 point is basically equals to v d d right. This point v d d primarily meaning that p 3 is in the off state fine and as a result when p 3 is in the off state with the clock equals to 0 I end up having uh, nothing is happening here. So, so whatever the initial value of q will be stored by this cross coupled inverter which is placed here and it will store the data properly that is all. Let us suppose clock so, so moreover when clock was equals to 0. So, this was 0 this will come here this will be 1 0 1 which means that m 1 will be switched on and m 4 will be switched on right at uh, when clock goes from uh, goes goes it was initially 0 and goes to 0. So, m, m 1 and m 4 will be switched on as a result m 2 will switch on or switch out depending upon the value of d, but surely these inverters will get switched on. So, let us let me name is i 1, i 2 and i 3 and, and let us suppose transistor m 1 and m 4. So, the all these 4 will get switched on very heavily because it sees a large voltage at the gate side of m 3 and m 4. Once this happens you might have a shorting of this voltage across this arm right. No data will be lost, but there will be shorting of voltage available here. When d is equals to let us suppose low then this p 2 becomes on right and therefore, any voltage available at this point is going to the ground via this p 2 voltage right and that is the reason you lose voltages at certain point of time to make it more robust. Uh, similarly, if d equals to 1 nothing will happen and therefore, m, m 2 will be switched on, but in for previous case m 2 was switched off right and therefore, this is directly connected to v d d in this case right. So, this we have finished as far as understanding the basic pulse register is concerned basic idea of pulse register. Uh, what we will do in the next uh, module is uh, look into the various aspects of this pulse register and then once we have once we have done that we will actually discuss the uh, last part of the stock and that is basically sense amplifier based shift register and we will recapitulate what we have done till now fine. With this I will just take a break and thank you very much.